So I have a book haul today. So this is going to be a long video. I hope you've got some snacks or beverage with you because this is going to take a while. Part of the reason for this is because one, my local secondhand bookstore had 50% off all of their children's and young adult books. And I also went to a book fair where everything was just super cheap and I found some good books. And I'm actually going to start out unboxing a couple of packages. But before I get into that, I do have two books that I have already unboxed. Um, I received the Fairy Loot box this month and there were two books included. So if you want to know which two books these are and what other goodies were included in the Fairy Loot box, I'll leave a link to that down below. The first package that I have here is from the Book Depository. I believe I have three books in here. Um, and I actually... I've been waiting to unbox these for most of the month, so I've actually kind of forgotten what one of the books is. I do know what the other two are. Here we go. All three are in here. So I'm going <laughs> to... I don't know what that was. But this is the one that I was most excited about. I have already read it, and you guys know this, but... It is the US edition of Nevernight by Jay Kristoff. I've been holding off ordering myself a copy of this for so long and I have no idea why. Because Nevernight was one of my favourite books that I read in 2016. And I have the UK cover covers and I really really love the US edition of it as well. Just the UK and the US did an amazing job with the cover for Nevernight. So I ordered myself a copy. My battery's about to die. It's not going to last this entire video. Just give me a moment. Okay, new battery. Hopefully this lasts. Nevernight follows Mia Corvia, who is the daughter of an executed traitor. Um, she actually witnessed her father being hanged, and she wants to seek revenge on the men responsible for her father's death. In order to do this, she decides to join the Red Church, where she will train to become an assassin. Ugh, yes, Assassins. Oh my goodness. As I mentioned, this was one of my favourite books of 2016. I've just recently reread it and I would highly recommend it. Okay, what else do I have in here? Oh, I think I've read this one as well. Yes. Yes. Okay. So I decided to pick up a copy of The First 15 Lives of Harry August by Claire North. This is a book that I also read in 2016 and it also was one of my favourites. I listened to this on audiobook, but I decided to pick up a physical copy because I do want to reread this at some point and I would like to do it with the actual physical book. We follow a man named Harry who relives the same life time and time again. Every time he dies, he is reborn um, under the exact same circumstances, so it's not really reincarnation into a different body. He's the same person and he holds the same memories as well, so he's able to recall all of his previous lives. For his first 10 or 11 years, nothing has ever really changed. He could make small differences, but overall nothing really changes in the grand scheme of things. But then there is something that does appear and through threatens the balance and potentially might destroy the world. And what is that going to be? You've got to read it to find out. It was such an epic book. I would also really highly recommend this. The audiobook of this was also fantastic. The last book that I have in here is one that I have not read, but after doing my bookish buzzwords video where I was talking about one of my buzzwords being assassin, it reminded me of a book that I've been wanting to pick up for ages and doing that video prompted me to buy it. And that is Grave Mercy by Robin Lefebvre's. So the main character, I think, is it pronounced Ismay? Uh, she finds sanctuary in the convent of St. Martin after escaping an arranged marriage. And if she wants to stay there, she will be trained as an assassin. And I don't really know anything else, but that was enough to grip me. I've heard pretty good things about this as well. I'm really looking forward to getting to this one and just satisfying some more of my assassin cravings. That sounds a bit creepy. The next package I'm going to be unboxing is the YA Chronicles Pride Box. This is something new that they've decided to do. Um, it's not going to be a monthly thing, probably every few months, something along those lines. But essentially, it's going to be a box in which they include a couple of books that feature LGBTQIA plus characters, which is very exciting. But let's open up this. There aren't any other goodies in here as well. It's just the two books. <gasps> oh, that's so exciting. Okay, I think, yes, okay. The first thing that we have in here is a note from one of the authors, which is very exciting. If you can't tell from the note what the book is, it is Queens of the Geek by Jen Wild. I actually don't know much about this, but I have been seeing this popping up on all of my social media feeds everywhere. Also, that is an amazing color of pink. So this is about three friends. We have Charlie, who is a vlogger, very cool, and she is promoting her first movie at a convention called Supercon. Another actress arrives at Supercon called Alyssa Huntington, who Charlie has a crush on, and apparently it's not as one-sided as she thought. And then we have Taylor, and it says her brain is wired differently 
differently, making her fear change. And one thing in her life she thinks will never change is her friendship with her best guy friend, Jamie. But I think she might have some feelings for him or something. I guess I will find out. But this looks super, super cool. If any of you guys have read it, definitely let me know what you think. I've been seeing this popping up everywhere. I also just spotted the YA Chronicles bookmark, which is for the Pride Box, which is really awesome. Really like this bookmark. And we also have this little thing in here. I think it might also be another note from the author. Oh, yes, it is. Oh, that's so exciting. So if you can't gather what well, this book is, it is released by Patrick Ness. And oh my goodness, how stunning is this cover? This is another one that I don't really know much about, but I just... This is one that I actually don't really know much about, but just have been... This is another one that I don't actually know anything about, but I'm really excited because it's a new Patrick Ness. The blurb doesn't seem to reveal too much either. All I can really gather is that we have a main character named Adam, and it's set during the summer, and I think there's a ghost. There's not much else that I can really gather from the blurb. Ooh, today everything changes. But... Obviously, there's going to be some LGBTQIA plus representation in here. Again, if any of you guys have read this yet, definitely let me know. I'm very curious to hear what you think about it because I haven't the slightest what this is going to entail. And the last package that I'm going to be unboxing is another subscription box. I actually entered a giveaway that was being run by uh, Quarterly Co for their literary boxes, um, which is very cool. And obviously I was one of the winners, so I received their young adult literary box. If you aren't aware, these boxes um, are actually curated by a particular author, so you will receive their book in the box, as well as two other books of their choice, and a bunch of other little uh, goodies as well. I have unboxed one of these um, a few months ago, I think towards the beginning of the year. Really, really enjoyed it. Ooh, okay. So the first thing that I see in here, what is this? Oh my gosh, this sounds very, very cool. We have these sheets of paper. It's relating to the main book in this box, but essentially in the book, one of the characters teams up with a friend he's made in World of Warcraft and they go on a journey. So I think that this here is a puzzle. Um, you'll turn various Warcraft characters into possible destinations. Apply one set of directions found on this page to one of the Warcraft characters you see here, and you've got to figure out which directions apply to which characters. That is really, really cool. Oh my goodness. That is amazing. Okay. That has me very, very excited. The next thing I saw in the box is actually the book for this box, and that is Looking for Group by Rory Harrison. So here we have a post-it note saying, Oi, oi, check out my annotations inside. And one of the really, really great things about the literary boxes is that it does come with annotations by the author. So they've made notes all throughout the book that you can read while you're reading the book, which I think makes a really exciting reading experience for this. So very, very excited. Um, again, have no idea what this one's about. So let me see what I can find out. The main character, Dylan, had cancer, but he's now in remission. And the only thing that's really been able to help him escape is playing World of Warcraft as per the puzzle that I showed you just before. Through World of Warcraft, he makes a friend named Arden. And I think that she's having her own struggles as well. Um, her father doesn't recognize her true gender, so I think we have some trans representation in here. Dylan is also struggling with addiction, and I think there is some romance that might blossom from this all. I haven't heard much about this book at all, so again, if any of you have read it, please let me know what you think. A lovely letter from the author, which is quite a long letter actually. Very, very cool. I'll read this one in a little bit. A looking for group bookmark and a signed book plate. One of the goodies that was included in this box is also 3D decorative decal and it's dinosaurs or dragons or something of the sort. That is absolutely epic. Oh my gosh. So I think these are all the ones that are included in here, which is pretty damn awesome. Got to find a place to put all these. That is epic. It also came with some bubbles, which is absolutely adorable. Oh my gosh. That is hilarious. I probably shouldn't open that right now, so I'm going to leave that uh, for later. We also have this pin here, and I don't actually recognize it, but taking a look at the letter, I think that this is the Horde emblem. Not too sure what the Horde is, so if that's just me being really ignorant, feel free to let me know what this is from in the comments. But we also have a really cute necklace as well, which has a Tree of Life on it. That is so pretty. And the last two things included in the box are the two books as well, chosen by the author. And these are two that I've actually really been interested in for a while. So I'm very, very excited that I now have a copy of them. The first is The Miseducation of Cameron Post by Emily M. Danforth. The main character, Cameron Post, her parents pass away. And unfortunately, she is slightly relieved by the fact that they will never know that she kissed a girl. After her parents' death, she moves in with her conservative aunt and very old-fashioned grandmother. And then a girl named 
Coley comes to town, and I think they develop a really strong friendship, potentially some underlying feelings there as well. And lastly, we have Nimona by Noelle Stevenson. For one, this is a graphic novel, which has me very excited, and for two, if I gather this correctly, we're following some villains, which is very cool. So Nimona is a shapeshifter, and Lord Ballister Blackheart is a villain with a vendetta, which sounds very, very exciting. I've been wanting to pick this up for a while and give it a try, so I'm thrilled that I now have a copy of it, and there are a few readathons coming up soon that I think this would be perfect to try and read then. So that's it for the unboxings. Now for the rest of the books. I picked up the box set of The School of Good and Evil by Soman Janani. This one I was also pushed to pick up after um, my buzzwords video where I talked about fictional or magical schools. That reminded me of this series that I've been wanting to get to for a really long time and so I bought the box set. Yes. I don't have a blurb handy but from what I can remember about it uh, we follow these two main characters here, unsure of their names, and there is a school for good and a school for evil. And I think that both of them had originally thought that they were going to a particular school but when it came down to it they were actually sent to the opposite school than they thought they would go to. But was it actually a mistake? Ah, I've heard some really great things about these books. Very excited to pick them up. Who knows when? but now I have the whole box set, so I can marathon them when I want to. The Love Oz YA Anthology Begin and Begin. This is edited by Danielle Binks, and we have a bunch of lovely authors, including Amy Kaufman, Melissa Keel, Will Kostakis, Ellie Marnie, Jacqueline Moriarty, Michael Pryor, Alice Pung, Gabrielle Tozer, Lily Wilkinson, and Danielle Binks. So this anthology came together to celebrate Australian young adult fiction, which just makes my heart sing. Um, I've heard some fantastic things about the short stories included in here as well, we do have a really wide variety of genres and stories, but it's just celebrating Australian authors and Australian fiction. I haven't picked this up yet, very much looking forward to it, and I did go to the uh, Love Oz YA anthology panel at the Sydney Writers Festival and all of the authors kind of talked a little bit about the stories that they wrote, some of them kind of really stepping outside of their normal uh, genres that they usually write, which is really cool, but guys, I'm so excited about this. I'm not sure if I want to read it all in one go or just read a story at a time here and there. We shall see. This next book is my most anticipated release of 2017 and I am so incredibly thankful. Jay Kristoff, thank you so much for sending this my way. I'm honestly so, so grateful and I'm so excited that I have it in my hands. Guys, guys, God's Grave by Jay Kristoff. Oh my gosh. So if you're not aware, this is the sequel to Nevernight. It's being released in September and this is the US ARC copy and I got it and Jay sent me a copy and he signed it. He drew me a Mr. Kindly as well, which is the cutest thing. And I am currently in the middle of it, really, really enjoying it so far. I'm just so excited to see what else is in store for this book. The few people that I know have already read this. I'm just absolute praise for it. So I'm really looking forward to finishing this one. But at the same time, also like not looking forward to the fact that I'll still have to wait so long <laughs> for the last book in this series to come out because this one isn't even released yet. I always forgot to include this book actually, but I also picked up, I think, my fourth copy of Nevernight by Jay Kristoff. But the reason that I picked this one up is because I've decided to do a traveling book. So I decided to do Nevernight, um, partly because it was another excuse for me to reread the book in anticipation for God's Grave. But basically I'm gonna go through and annotate the book with my thoughts and feelings, and then I'm going to send it to somebody else and they're going to read the book and annotate it as well. So by the end of it, after it's gone to, I think about 12 people, I'm gonna have a fully annotated book with everybody's thoughts about Nevernight and it's going to be really really interesting reading it again and seeing what everyone was experiencing as they were reading the book. I also picked up a copy of Lincoln in the Bardot by George Saunders. This is one of the books that the publishing house I work for, Bloomsbury, has published and I've been hearing so many amazing things about it. This is set in the 1860s and it's based on uh, a true story um, following President Lincoln and his son's death. Following his son's death uh, there were several reports saying that Lincoln returned to the crypt to hold his boy's body, which is just absolutely depressing to think about. But using this story, George Saunders created Lincoln in the Bardo. So in this book, we actually follow the young Willie Lincoln and he's kind of trapped in the Bardo, which is kind of an in-between, like a limbo, if you will. And I think he meets a lot of other 
people that are also trapped in the Bardo, some other ghosts, which sounds interesting. So again, like I said, heard great things about this. So very much looking forward to it. I do actually have a few more Bloomsbury books that I picked up this month, so I will show you those next. One by Sarah Crossan. Sarah also came to Sydney for the Sydney Writers' Festival, and we actually held an event called the Bloomsbury Institute. It was the first time that we did this at Bloomsbury, and it's kind of like um, a salon-style, really intimate event where we have an author and we have a little bit of kind of an interview Q&A session, and after that uh, people can talk to Sarah, have her book signed by her. So I got my book signed by Sarah. It was an absolutely great event. Sarah was lovely um, and I was very excited to get a copy of this. I actually forgot to bring my other Sarah Crossan books with me to get them signed so I picked up one which is one that I don't actually already have and it follows conjoined twins and this one is actually also written in verse. I've heard some pretty great things about this one apparently it's just really heartbreaking as well so looking forward to getting to this. Carnivalesque by Neil Jordan follows a boy named Andy who visits a carnival with his parents. He finds himself in a hall of mirrors and he's kind of hypnotized by all of his reflections looking back at him but then he sees one of his selves walking out of the Hall of Mirrors and leaving with his parents. And Andy himself is trapped there behind the glass. I actually already have an advanced copy of this one, but I got a finished copy of Insomniac City by Bill Hayes. I attended Bill Hayes's event at the Sydney Writers' Festival where he was talking about Insomniac City. And in all honesty, it was the best Writers' Festival event that I've ever been to. I was just so incredibly moved by it. The discussion was great. Bill was just so eloquent and the interviewer had some really great contributions and really great questions. A couple of passages were also read from Insomniac City and it just got me so excited to pick this book up. I'm kind of anxious to read it, but not because I think I'll be disappointed, but just because I think I will have such a strong reaction to this one. So I think I need to be prepared for it and really ready myself. But Insomniac City is Bill Hayes's memoir. It begins when he moves to New York City from San Francisco after the death of his partner. And when he's in New York City, he meets Oliver Sacks, the neurologist. And this is a bit of a love letter to New York City itself, as well as a love letter to Oliver Sacks and their relationship, as Oliver Sacks actually passed away in recent years. Cinnamon by Neil Gaiman, illustrated by Divya Srinivasan. Um, this is a picture book about Cinnamon, who is a princess, and she has pearls for eyes. So she is blind, but for reasons unknown, she doesn't talk either. Her parents are trying to find someone to teach her to speak, and nothing is working until until this tiger arrives at the palace, claiming that he is there to teach her to talk. The Sellout by Paul Beatty. This won the Man Booker Prize last year, and this is just kind of, I think, a really outrageous book um, that I think is also really quite difficult to read as well. The main character of this, he is African American, and after his father is killed in a police shootout, he wants to reinstate slavery and segregation. Like I said, an outrageous book and I think it does really comment on a lot of these stereotypes and anxieties um, about race in America but definitely interested in your thoughts if any of you have read this as well. Neverwhere by Neil Gaiman. After finishing American Gods which I really enjoyed I went straight to the bookstore and picked up this book. Um, one of my close friends has read quite a few Neil Gaiman books and this is her absolute favourite so I decided to get it because I really want to read it. This is the edition that has all the illustrations by Chris Riddell. To be quite frank I actually had no idea what this was about before picking it up. Richard finds a mysterious girl bleeding on the pavement. Her name is Dor and she is on the run from two assassins. Again, assassins. He decides to help her and in doing so this leads him to the Neverwhere which is the place filled with monsters and angels and beasts. That same shopping trip I also picked up The Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman. To be honest I'm not really sure how to describe this book but all I really know is that it follows a middle-aged man who returns to his childhood home and although the home itself that he used to live in isn't there any longer he is drawn to a farm where when he was younger he encountered a very interesting girl named Letty and I think that in return to that place it does bring up a lot of memories um, especially about his childhood. I also picked up Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb. Two reasons for this. One like I mentioned with the buzzwords and assassins. 
that definitely played a big part in that. And also because for quite a while now I've been wanting to pick up a Robin Hobb book on the recommendation of Sam from Sam's Nonsense. Um, I'm pretty sure that Robin Hobb is one of, if not her favourite author. She talks about all of Robin Hobb's series all the time, so I decided it was about time to pick it up. This follows Fitz, who is the illegitimate child of the Crown Prince, and in order to be useful to the Crown, he is trained as an assassin. But his tutor has other political alliances and is determined determined to either discredit or kill him. I received one review copy this month and I was sent this unsolicited from Penguin Random House and that is Wreck by Fleur Ferris. This follows Tamara Bennett who is determined to be the first journalist to only report on good news. She's just finished with high school and I think she's about ready to leave her little town as well when she comes home one day to find that her house has been ransacked. And whatever the person or persons um, responsible are seeking, I think the clue lies with a tragic boating accident that had happened five years prior. Prior. Haven't really heard anything about this one, so interested to see what it's all about. One of my friends was getting rid of some of her advanced copies, and this one took my fancy just because I also have the advanced copy for the first book in the series, which I've still yet to read, but I will one day. And it is Empire of Dust by Eleanor Herman, which is the sequel to Legacy of Kings. Legacy of Kings follows Alexander the Great when he is 16 years old. In addition to him, it also follows the perspectives of two princesses, three commoners, and a queen as well. I picked up in its entirety the first Del Toro Quest series by Emily Rodder, which is The Lake of Tears, City of the Rats, The Shifting Sands, Dread Mountain, The Maze of the Beast, The Valley of the Lost, and The Return to Del. This is a series that I read when I was back in primary school. Absolutely loved them. Um, I borrowed these from my library, so I decided to actually, since most of these were about three to four dollars, I decided to pick up the entire series, and I think it's something at some point that I do want to reread. These are super for short, as you can tell, so they would definitely be very quick to whiz through. In this series, we follow Leaf, Barda, and Jasmine, who go on a quest in order to stop the Lord of Shadows from invading and enslaving the people of Del Toro. The only way to stop him is using the Belt of Del Toro, which has seven gems. However, the belt has been stolen and each of the gems hidden across the land. So in each book, they are searching for one of the different gems. I also picked up Harry Potter's 5, 6, and 7. I do own the full box set of the original US hardcovers, but I don't actually own my own copies of the UK editions. Um, my parents bought them. The only one that I actually own myself is the third book, so I decided to uh, continue with my collection. So here we go. I also bought the entire Chain of Charms series by Kate Forsyth with the Gypsy Crown, the Silver Horse, the Herb of Grace, the Cat's Eye Shell, and the Lightning Bolt. I've heard some really great things about Kate Forsyth's books before. I haven't actually heard anything about this series in particular, but the reason that I went ahead and bought these books not knowing anything about them is because books one and four were signed by the author. So that was my reasoning there. The first book follows Amelia and Luca who are on a dangerous quest to find these forgotten charms that their grandmother believes uh, is the only way to rescue and save their family from death. They have been charged with murder and are given three weeks left to live. I also miraculously found this edition of Monsters of Men by Patrick Ness. If you recall, um, I do have this same edition which has the clear case for the first book in the series, The Knife of Never Letting Go. And after getting that first book, I was never able to find the ISBNs for the other books in the series in this same edition. So when I saw Monsters of Men, I had to get it. I have already read this. I don't actually already own a copy of it. I listened to it on audiobook. So now my first and third books in the series match, but my second book doesn't. If I ever happen to find the ask and the answer in this edition, I'm probably going to get it so that they all match because... They look so cool. The series starts with The Knife of Never Letting Go with Todd who lives in a society um, where everybody is able to hear each other's thoughts. But one day he's out exploring when he discovers a pocket of silence. I grabbed a copy of A Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara. I've never actually seen this edition before so when I saw it at the book fair I just had to get it because I do much prefer this edition to the one with the face on it. In all honesty, I don't actually know a lot about A Little Life. I have read Hanya Yanagihara's other book, The People in the Trees. I actually had to study it, I think it was last year for one of my classes, and I did quite like it, but for the most part, I've heard people absolutely raving about A Little Life. Everybody just seems to love it, so 
when I saw it, I decided to get it. I also picked up Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell by Susanna Clarke. This is set in the 1800s in England, and I think it's long been believed that magicians have just kind of disappeared when scholars find one magician that still remains called Mr. Norrell, but he finds himself challenged by the emergence of another magician, Jonathan Strange. And then a battle ensues between the two magicians. Sounds great. It is a chunky book though. This is just over a thousand pages, so I won't be reading this until I'm done with uni because I don't have the time. I decided to pick up this hardcover edition of The Narrow Road to the Deep North by Richard Flanagan. If you recall, this is one of my favourite standalone books of all time. It is set during World War II, following a man who is in a Japanese prisoner of war camp, but it also follows him kind of prior to World War II and afterwards as well, so a lot of things that happens in his life. I really, really love the book, and when I saw this gorgeous, gorgeous edition, I just kind of had to get it because it's just stunning and why not and even though I bought it it's not being added to my TBR pile so I don't need to feel guilty about it right right guys we're almost there almost there I've got five six books left we can do this speaking of World War two I also picked up the Nightingale by Kristen Hanna I mean six dollars for a hardcover book I couldn't pass it up plus it's set in World War two and I'm just really intrigued by World War two stories don't ask me why. This is set in France in the late 1930s. And I don't think I'm going to pronounce this right, but I think it follows a woman named Vianne who doesn't believe that the Nazis will invade France, but they do. And a German captain requisitions her home and basically her and her daughter have to kind of live with the enemy or lose everything. She also has a sister named Isabel who is young and rebellious. And after the man she falls in love with betrays her, she decides to join the rebellion. I also decided to pick up And the Mountains Echoed by Khaled Hussein. This is the author of The Kite Runner and A Thousand Splendid Sons, two books that I have read and really enjoyed. So when I saw this one, again, $6 for the hardcover, I decided to pick it up. All that I really know about this one is that it's set in Afghanistan in the 1950s and we follow a brother and sister, Abdullah and Pari. The blurb also seems to indicate that this has a really heavy focus on relationships and the bonds that define us, as well as journeys both across generations and continents. Again, another book that I've been wanting to get for ages but haven't because I've been wanting to get the hardcover and we only have the paperback here in Australia. But that is The Luminaries by Eleanor Catton. $7 for this chunky hardcover. I mean, I couldn't pass it up really. I've been kind of wanting to go into this book not knowing a huge amount about it, but what I do know is that it's set in the 1860s. We're following a man named Walter Moody who travels to New Zealand to find his fortune on the gold fields. And I do think that he finds himself wrapped up in some mysteries, but that's all that I really want to know. I also picked up books one and two of the Ascendants trilogy by Jennifer A. Nielsen with The False Prince and The Runaway King. There are four boys that have been kidnapped and very strangely, they all look really alike. One of the boys is named Sage, and he discovers that these boys have been kidnapped with the intention that one of them will impersonate the kingdom's missing prince. And the only way that he's going to be able to survive is to become the prince. And I think that is it. One more, one more, hold up. I also picked up A Court of Wings and Ruin by Sarah J Mass. This is the final book in the Court of Thorns and Roses, like, first trilogy. There's going to be more books in the series following different characters, but from this trilogy itself. This is the final book. If you haven't heard of A Court of Thorns and Roses before, it is a very loose retelling of Beauty and the Beast, wherein the main character Feyre is out hunting in the woods one day when she kills a wolf. It turns out that that wolf was actually a fairy, so a beast comes and drags her into the fairy courts. Okay, I think that's it now. I'm really hoping it is. Anything else that I find, I'll just show you in my next book haul because this is getting ridiculous. For those of you that stuck it out this long, I congratulate you and I'd be very curious to see how many of you there are so type pineapples in the comments so I can see how many of you watch the entire book haul you crazy people but I'm gonna go now and try and find a place to put all of these 60 plus books that I got this month so I'm gonna leave you now I hope you guys enjoyed this video and as always would love to hear your thoughts on any of the books that I did mention in this haul until next time I will talk to you in the comments bye